In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, I bear witness that there is no other God beside God. He is the one and only God, the absolute God. Never did he beget, nor was he begotten. None equals him. O people of the scripture, let us come to a logical agreement between us and you that we shall not worship except God, that we never idolize any human beings beside God. If you turn away, then bear witness that we are submitters. If you refuse to accept this invitation, then bear witness that we only submit to the Lord of the universe, the creator of all things. O children of Adam, our God is one and the same God. There is no other God beside God. And those who are tearing us into pieces between religions, sects, and denominations do not belong with God. They belong with Satan. Just simple as that. They belong with Satan. In the last video, I presented some facts concerning uh, the work that was done through Dr. Rashad Khalifa. I'm absolutely certain that Dr. Khalifa was, without a doubt, God's messenger of the covenant, who was uh, prophesied in the Torah, in the Gospel, and in the Quran, Almighty God clearly in the Quran refers to the messenger of the covenant in Surah 3 verse number 81 and the covenant of the prophets in Surah 33 verse number 7, which I will present to you some facts which are incredible about these verses. Nothing new, uh, it's been always the same thing. Uh, people decide that, look, I believe uh, what I have already believed. I don't want to believe anything new. The Jews and, uh, did not believe in the Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah to come. Uh, the the so-called Christians, uh, they do not believe in uh, the Gentile prophet who is prophesied in the Torah and in the Gospel. And uh, the so-called Muslims, they think that Prophet Muhammad was the final messenger, so therefore no other messenger is going to come after Prophet Muhammad. Uh, when they have the Quran, the awesome document uh, in front of them, with clear revelations without any ambiguity, in Surah 33, verse number 40, Almighty God says to Prophet Muhammad that he was a messenger of God and the final prophet. Rasul Allah wa khatam al -nabiyin. And there's a difference between Rasul and Nabi. Nabi is a prophet, Rasul is a messenger. And this is a topic that is so incredibly important and the Quran makes it so clear. It distinguishes this distinguishes between the messenger and a prophet. All of God's prophets, of course, after the prophet Abraham, were messengers as well. But uh, the messengers are not prophets. Rashad Khalifa never claimed that he was a prophet. He, oh, he kept on repeating that Prophet Muhammad was Khatam al Nabiyin. He was the final prophet. And prophet is the one through whom the book comes, and the Quran is the final book is God's final message to the world. After the revelation of the 19 base mathematical miracle of the Quran, of course, a lot of excitement were created in the so-called Muslim world. But uh, when Rashad 
said that he was a messenger of God, all of a sudden, many of them turned away. And uh, one of the major duty of the messenger of the covenant was to remove the two verses that were added in Mecca to the end of the last surah that was revealed in Medina, surah 9, the only surah in the Quran uh, that does not have the opening statement in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, Bismillah rahman rahim Because Almighty God, obviously, all along knew, and He had allowed actually this to, happen, this to happen, because to prove as to what, how it is that no one can tamper with this Quran. And two verses were added at the end of this surah. And uh, in accordance with God's will, these two verses were removed from the end of Surah 9. And in the Quran, clearly, Almighty God in Surah 7, verse number 78, does point at uh, things that they think it is from the God when it is not from God. And I did present facts. And uh, not only the verse is so clear, also the mathematics of it is awesome, is incredible. That God exactly says there are two verses. Two verses. Two verses is going to be added. I pointed in my last video that Rashad advocated the worship of God alone. The fact that in the places of worship we must not mention any other name beside the name of God. He pointed at the fact that the Quran is Kitab uh, al-Mufassalan. is a book that is fully detailed. Everything is in it, nothing is left out of it. These are all in the Quran. These are all verses in the Quran, clear. Rashad did not step out of the Quran. Everything that he said were within the frame of the final testament, God's final message to the world. The book that is mathematically composed with number 19 as its common denominator, alayhu tisat ashar, over it is the signature of Almighty God. In the Quran, if we go to Surah 7, verse number 35, let me read it for you. Almighty God talks to the children of Adam, the entire human population, not just one people, entire human population. It says, O children of Adam, when messengers, not one messenger, messengers, Rosolo, messengers, Come to you from among you and recite my revelations to you. Those who take heed and lead a righteous life will have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. Uh, obviously, the people before the time of Prophet Muhammad did not have access to this Quran because this Quran was revealed through Prophet Muhammad. So this Quran is for the benefit of the people who have access to it. They can read it and puts, put uh, its directives into work for them. This starts from the time of the revelation of the Quran to the end of the world. So these verses, this verse clearly says to, ch to the children of Adam that messengers come from among you and recite my revelations, this Quran, to you. Prophet Muhammad was not Khatam al mursaleen he was Khatam al nabiyyin Surah 33, verse number 40. The next verse says, As for those who reject our revelations and are too arrogant to uphold them, they have incurred hell, wherein they abide forever. Eternal damnation, eternal hell for the people who do not believe. So Almighty God clearly says their messengers come from among you and recite my revelations to you. The people who are going to come in, they're going to have the Quran's translation because one thing for sure, uh, the people need to understand the message before they can benefit from its directives. Prophet Muhammad was not Khatam al mursaleen The Quran is Khatam al mursaleen The Quran is the living book it is not a regular book. It is a living scripture. It talks to you. It communicates with you. It communicates with us if we are sincere. 
Surah 56, verse number 79. La yamassahu illa al-mutahharun. You cannot grasp the meaning of this Quran unless you are sincere. Not that you have to wash your hands before you can touch the Quran, the physical book, which is paper and ink. So we don't worship. We don't worship the book, the paper and the ink. We worship the Almighty Creator, who is the author of the Quran. Rashad advocated the worship of God alone. It is in the Quran. He said, Shahada is la ilaha illallah. There is no other God beside God, period. And that is in Surah 3, verse number 18. In the places of worship, do not mention any other name beside the name of God. It is in Surah 72, verse number 18. Places of worship, worship belongs to God. The religion must be absolutely devoted to God alone. He pointed at the fact that the Quran is complete and fully detailed. That's all we need. And pointed at the fact that Hadith and Sunnah did not come from Prophet Muhammad. These are writings attributed, mostly lies attributed to Prophet Muhammad way many years after Prophet Muhammad was already gone. Prophet Muhammad, who lived 63 years, delivered the Quran, the whole Quran, nothing but the Quran. This is in the Quran. This is in the Quran. So if people who claim that they love Muhammad, they have to follow this Quran. They're liars. They lie to themselves. And they're liars. And God knows that they are. They're not following the Quran that came through Prophet Muhammad. They're following Hadith. And Almighty God has mentioned the name of Hadith by name in the Quran. And the people, those who translate the Quran, never use the word Hadith in their translation. That's how they're concealing the information. Because God Almighty condemns people who are following the Hadith. And look at the world around us. Those so-called Muslims who are murdering one another, do you think they are killing each other because of the Qur'an? No. Are they killing each other because of the Muhammad who was the final prophet? No. They are killing each other because of the nonsense that were added uh, by so-called scholars to the religion. And they are torn into pieces between these sects. They are murdering one another. In the Quran, clearly, Almighty God says Prophet Muhammad was a messenger of God and the final prophet. After the time of Abraham, Abraham, the one who coined the term Islam, he called us Muslims to begin with. Surah 22, verse number 78, he is the one. All of God's prophets and messengers who came after Prophet Muhammad excuse me, after Prophet Abraham, they were Muslims. Uh, if you go to Torah, uh, the, the fifth book of Moses, chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, uh, what do you read? Hear, O Israel, listen up. The Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your might. This is the first commandment. Moses. If anybody does that, is a Muslim. If anybody loves God with all his or her soul, mind, and strength, is a, is a Muslim. Devotion to God must be absolute. If you go to uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 29 and 30, they're asking Jesus a lot of questions. Uh, they want to find out if he knows the scripture. And they say, what is the first of all the commandments? What is the first of all the commandments? And he said, hear, O Israel, listen up. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. How many Lord? One Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The Messiah was a Muslim, submitted to God. He never said, worship me. He never said, love me. He never said, give me 1%. He said, don't even call me good. 
And actually, uh, even in the Bible, that this is not the, really the true Bible, because Almighty God uh, says that uh, that He taught him the Torah and gave him the gospel. These are not gospel of the Messiah, Jesus. According to this, according to that. But still God has kept enough information in them that those who are sincere at heart, they can find the authentic pieces and put them together and see the picture. Even in this Bible, the Messiah says, in the day of resurrection, those who call him Lord, 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 he's going to disown him. Many, many will say to me in that day, in the day of resurrection, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name have cast out devils. In your name have done many wonderful works. These are the guys who claim they're, they're good. They're doing wonderful works in the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you impure. Go away. Did I tell you the Lord, our God, is just one Lord? Did I tell you, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength? This is the first commandment. Did I say to you that I on my own cannot do anything? Didn't I tell you, don't even call me good. The only good is God. Didn't I tell you that I do not the last day and the last hour, not even the angels in heaven know, only God knows. How clearer I could tell you that I am not what you said I was. Didn't I tell you I'm not in here to change the law or the prophets? the same thing. All of God's messengers came delivering the same message that there is one and none beside him. But the human devils after God's messengers, prophets, who were not happy to be just following the truth, being a follower was not good enough, they wanted to be leaders, so they had to do something. They had to tamper with the truth that came through God's messengers and prophets. And uh, they took something out of it or they added something to it. Before you know it, they came up with something that absolutely had nothing to do with the original teachings. It's been the same system. The case of the Quran, Almighty God made sure that it is going to be tamper proof. It is the sealed book prophesied in Isaiah 29, 11. The book that is sealed. It is tamper proof. The entire book is mathematically composed in such a way that no impurity can enter into it. No one can take a letter out of the Quran or add something to it. The mathematical composition collapses. And what is 19? The sun, the moon, and earth get aligned in the same relative position every 19 years. This is God's signature. In the Quran, we have two surahs. Surah 23, the title of which is Al-Mu'minun, the believers. And uh, Surah 109, the title of which is Disbelievers, Al-Kafarun. And both these numbers are prime numbers. Both 23 and 109 are prime numbers. But what's so incredible, between these two surahs, there are 19 surahs, there are 19 surah numbers that are prime numbers. This tells you between the believers and the disbelievers is 19. In other words, 19 distinguishes between the believers and the disbelievers from the disbelievers. In the Quran, in uh, Surah 74, verse number 31, Almighty God says uh, that this miracle of the Quran, this 19, does five different things. Number one, it creates disturbance in the heart of the disbelievers. Some people hate it. They cannot stand it. They get all shaken up. Number two, the people of the book pointing at the Jews and the Christians, Almighty God says, by the mean of this miracle, they're going to realize that this Quran cannot be a human fabrication. They believe it. 
There are a lot of good Jewish people and good Christians. In Surah 2 verse number 62, Almighty God says, Surely those who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians and the converts, anyone who believes in God, the real God, and believes in, in the hereafter, eternal life, the soul is not going to die. And lead a righteous life. Three things. Believe in God. Believe in the hereafter. And lead a righteous life. Will receive the recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. There are good Jewish people, good Christians. There are good Jewish people and good Christians that actually may be Muslim in heart, submitter to God, but they just don't uh, call themselves Muslims because unfortunately uh, a lot of Muslims have done so many wrong things that a lot of people attribute all those wrong things to this religion when it's not true at all. A lot of Muslims have done a great job to really turn people off against this religion which is the religion of Abraham after prophet Abraham who, who was the founder of the religion of submission surah 22 verse number 78 uh, all of God's chosen ones were either messengers after prophet Abraham or uh, they were if they were prophets, of course, all of God's prophets were also uh, messengers as well because a messenger confirms the previous messengers and previous scriptures, the true scriptures, of course, not the scriptures that they have been uh, changed so many times and, and added a lot of things to it. But it's still, like I said, God has kept enough information in, in the gospel that people, those who are guided by Almighty God, they can find those pieces, those dots, and once they connect the dots, they see the picture. It's all between the individual and the Creator. We need to sincerely ask Almighty God for guidance. God will show us the truth. After Prophet Abraham, Prophet Abraham was Sadiq and Nabiya. He was not a messenger. He was a saint. He was a saint and a prophet. In the Quran, we have uh, uh, there are three saints that are mentioned mentioned in the Quran. One of them is Idris. Uh, that was way before Prophet Abraham. Uh, he was Sadiq and Nabiyan. He was a saint and a prophet. And then we have Prophet Abraham. He was Sadiq and Nabiyan. And then, of course, uh, Mary, mother of the Messiah Jesus, was Sadiqa. She was also a saint. These are the three saints that Almighty God has mentioned in the Quran. Now, all those saints uh, created by uh, uh, the Vatican, uh, they're competing with God. Uh, you know, the Pope is the representative of God and he, he creates, uh, they just canonized the uh, two of the uh, previous popes as saints. You know, the people who couldn't help themselves when they were alive, now they're dead. Their they're dead is helping other people. Wow. So, after Prophet Abraham, there were messengers, Prophet. When it comes to Prophet Muhammad, he was messenger of God and the final prophet so therefore this Quran is the final message to humanity is God's final message to the world it is the final testament now back to what I was saying about uh, uh, Dr. Rashad Khalifa uh, he was a messenger of God Almighty God clearly in the Quran says messengers are going to be coming reciting this uh, revelations, this Quran to you. And he did just that. It was God's will that he uh, decoded the Quran. It took four years for him to do it. Four years for the miracle of 19 to appear. And we know the first verse in the Quran is made of four words, 19 Arabic letters. 
But uh, in this video, I want to present to you some facts that uh, it tells us why in Surah 57 verse number 22 Almighty God says anything hap that happens on earth or to you has already been pre-recorded even before the creation Almighty God says this is easy for God to do obviously God knows the future and God has already written the future and uh, uh, some of the facts that I'm going to be presenting to you, it is going to be a, a very solid com confirmation of this fact in Surah 57, verse number 22. Now, Almighty God in the Quran says uh, that He has not left anything out of this Quran. Almighty God says, Nothing is left out of this Quran. Let us, and this is one thing we want to know, uh, what is it, what it is that God says nothing is left out of it. You know, uh, it took four years that Rashad Khalifa worked on surahs in the Quran that were prefixed with Quranic initials. After the first verse, surah, the second one starts with Alif Lam Mim, A L M. And he was wondering what the meaning of this verse is. These, this verse is, what is Alif Lam Mim, A L M? And, uh, he vowed, he promised to Almighty God that he is not going to continue do the translation of the Quran unless he understood the meaning the under, the, of these verses. It took four years for him to find out that all of these uh, uh, chapters, surahs in the Quran, there are 29 of them that are prefixed with the Quranic initials and these initials are the number of these initials, the sum of these initials, come out to be multiple of 19. So, this was the task, this was uh, the way that he was to go and then find out, discover the secret in the Quran and what is the secret. But now, we, we look at this, we know that uh, uh, this man was the one, the man through whom the 19 based mathematical miracle of the Quran was revealed. So we should really concentrate on Surah 19 in the Quran to see what this Surah is going to uh, show us, what this Surah is going to let us know. There are 29 Surahs prefixed with the Quranic initials, but Surah 19 is the number 10. Number 10, the first uh, surah with the Muqatta'at initial is surah 286, is surah Al-Baqarah, surah 2, surah 3, surah 7, surah 10, surah 11, surah 12, surah 14, surah 15, surah 19, and then it brings us to the first verse in Surah 19, which is Kahaya Ain Saad, is five initials. This is the greatest number of the uh, initials uh, prefixing one Surah at the very top. So, if we add the number of the verses in these Surahs, up to and including the first verse in Surah 19, Kahaya Ain Saad, the total of these verses add up to 100, 1,230. But what is 1,230? The name Rashad Rashad Khalifa is 1,230. Could this be a coincidence?
that the name of the person through whom this 19 based mathematical miracle of the miracle of the Quran was revealed his name gets spelled out by the number of the verses in the surahs that are prefixed with these secret initials from the beginning of the Quran to the first verse of surah 19 kaha ya Insa. Some people have problem with the spelling of Rashad Khalifa. Rashad Khalifa, the spelling of Rashad Khalifa is 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 re shin alef dal khe lam ya fe ha re shad kha li fa adds up to 1230. The miracle of the Quran was revealed through this person, Rashad Khalifa, and the name of this Rashad Khalifa was already written in the Quran. There are so many ways, of course, but this is so incredibly awesome and easy for anyone to uh, check it out. Now, since the 19 based mathematical miracle of the Quran was revealed through Rashad Khalifa. Let's go ahead and focus, concentrate on Surah 19. There are awesome information that are going to be coming out of Surah 19, but some of the matters related to this messenger is also in this Surah. Let's go to Surah 19 and go to verse number 19. Verse number 19. This, of course, the context is about uh, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel that goes to Mary. And uh, in this verse, uh, of course, the verse before it, Mary is uh, kind of upset. Who is this man in here? Because Gabriel went to her in the form of a man. And uh, she said, who are you? What are you doing in here? And he said, I'm a, I'm a messenger of your Lord to grant you a pure son. And of course, you know, the verse after, you know, that we know that Mary says that, how can I have a son? No man has touched me. I've never been unchaste. But look, the, the miracle of the 19 was revealed through Rashad Khalifa. It didn't, it was not revealed through me. It was not revealed through anybody else. It was destined to be revealed through Rashad Khalifa. Of course, when Rashad came in here and said Quran, the whole Quran, nothing but the Quran, no Hadith and Sunnah, and put those two, those, those verses do not belong to uh, to uh, uh, to the Quran. Uh, some people uh, in uh, 1989, the eleventh uh, Majlis al fuqaha they call themselves Council of Religious Scholars uh, in in Saudi Arabia. They decided that this man is uh, totally off, he's out of religion, and they came up with a decree that he needs to be eliminated, he needs, he needs to be taken out, he needs to be killed. That's what they came up with. Because this man said, worship God alone. Because this man says, Quran, the whole Quran, nothing but the Quran. This man says, God's Shahada in the Quran is La ilaha illallah. This man said, in the places of worship, do not mention any other name but the name of God, only God, only God. And they decided that he is out of religion. Out of religion of submission to who? Submission to God. Now, uh, Surah, in this verse, this verse 1919, this, this verse 1919 is comprised of 31 Arabic letters and its geometrical value when we add these uh, nine, uh, 31 numbers, we get 1990. Rashad Khalifa was assassinated on the 31st day of 1990. He was assassinated on the first day of January 1990, the first 31st day of 1990. Anything that happens on earth or to you has already been recorded even before the creation. This is easy for God to do. Chapter 57, verse number 22. What a privilege. What a privilege 
that somebody gives his life or her life for God and the word of God. This is verse number 19 surah of surah 19 in the Quran. It gives you 31, 1990 and this man was assassinated on the third, first, 31st day of 1990. If anybody thinks this is a coincidence, they should really doubt a lot of things about themselves. Let's go. This surah is uh, the surah is uh, uh, starting with five Arabic letters. Kahaya In Surah 19, this surah start with Kaf Ha Ya Ain Saad five initials Surah 19 the frequency of occurrence of the Kaf is 137 in this entire Surah Surah 19 Kaf Ha is 175 Ya 343 Ain Saad in Surah 19 it's the total amount, the total number of the, the frequency of occurrence of these five initials is 798. 19798. 19798. 19798. 19, 19, and this is the exact number of days that Rashad lived on this planet Earth. Rashad Khalifa was born on November 19th, 19. 35 in Egypt and was martyred on January 31st 1990 in Tucson Arizona the number of days is 19,798 days now look he lived 54 years 54 years times 365 it gives you 19710 you know what's so incredible if you go to if we go to Surah 33 verse number 7 uh, we see that the frequency of the occurrence of uh, the word God Allah in the Quran from the beginning of the Quran to the verse before this uh, is uh, before 33:7 is 1971 is 1971 the number of the times the word God is mentioned and of course this verse does not Surah 33 verse number 7 does not have uh, the, the word God in it so from the beginning of the Quran to this verse you, when you come in here you see that the number of times the word God is mentioned is 1971 and then Rashad had pointed this that uh, of course he didn't know that he didn't know when he was going to be assassinated he didn't know how many days he was going to live but uh, he knew that the covenant of the prophets uh, was fulfilled in 1971 uh, on December 21st, 1971. And this is actually in the footnote written uh, for footnote uh, of verse, uh, sort of 33, verse number 7, when Almighty God says he took a covenant from the prophets, uh, the five prophets that are mentioned in this actually verse. So uh, he was, uh, uh, he lived 54 years adds up to 19,710 19, and then from from December 31st from, from uh, here uh, if you add the number of days from the day that he he was born he was born on September 19th 12 days 31 31 that's including both dates important dates the date that he was born and the date that he was assassinated you see there's 74 days and where do we find Alai in Surah 74 and then during this time there are 14 leap years and 14 is one of the specific specifications of the Quran you can find this in Surah 15 verse number 87 pair of seven Nineteen thousand seven hundred ninety-eight days, 
anything that happens on earth or to you has already been pre-recorded even before the creation. This is easy for God to do. God Almighty knew that his messenger was going to be leaving this planet on that day. Those ulama, uh, fuqaha, who came up with the idea that this man was out of religion, they, the, they themselves have no idea what religion of Islam is all about. Submission to God alone. This man lived 19,798 days. This is not a coincidence. You know, uh, another thing which is so, because these things, when you put all these things together, it makes it almost impossible for somebody with a little sincerity to disbelieve. It's not the person. All the praise, praises and all the glories due to Almighty God. Nobody, nobody is important. Nobody is of any consequence. All these things are for us to become certain that what we have is from God and become certain that God is watching over us and everything is under control. God Almighty is not a God that is sitting back and doing nothing. God and his forces are in control. God is doing everything. One of the numbers that Rashad was very interested was number 817. And actually, in his, those who know him, knew him, in his office there was a picture concerning 817. Uh, and 817, 817 is 19 times 43. And uh, Rashad himself didn't know that this verse in the Quran verse 81 that talks about the messenger of the covenant in this verse the letter Qaf Q Q is the first letter of the word Quran this letter Qaf in this surah is repeated seven times in verse number 81 you have seven times the Q is mentioned and uh What's so incredible, again, these are all God's doing. That's why they're so incredible. It's awesome. And uh, it's, uh, Rashad went through the translation of the Quran, uh, the, the translation and the uh, review of the Quran uh, three times. And uh, the Quran has 114 surahs. So, he translated after, of course, you know, the Quran, the discovery of the 19. He, uh, he went through the whole thing and he translated the Quran once and then again the second time went through the entire Quran, uh, another 114 surahs. But in the third translation, when he had finished the review of Surah 49 in the Quran, at the end of Surah 9 he was assassinated. I remember clearly myself when the day that he was assassinated, someone had called my house telling my wife that Rashad was assassinated. I, uh, I was so uh, shaken up, not because he was assassinated, because I knew those who worship God alone, they will not die. In, uh, in the Quran, in Surah 2, verse number 154, in Surah 3, verse number 169, Almighty God clearly says, Do not think of those who are killed in the cause of God. They are dead. They are alive. They are alive. They are alive with their, at their Lord being well provided for. So I had no worries about him. But my worry was that, uh, my thoughts were that, Oh, he, why didn't he finish the job? He was supposed to go through the third translation. And this was my ignorance, not knowing God's system is perfect. It was right after the translation and the review of Surah 49, he was supposed to leave the planet Earth. Not only he, he was assassinated on the 31st day of 1990, 
Not only that the number of days that he was supposed to live on this earth were 19,798 days, but he was supposed to do the work in here on the Quran. He had to go through the translation of the Quran three times. The third translation, however, at the end of Surah 49, his job was finished. And after, after Surah 49, immediately Surah 50 starts with what? Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Oh my God, this, this is a new awesome chapter in the Qur'an's awesome mathematical miracle. Praise be to God. With the Q in the Qur'an, we are going to be challenging the highest IQs on this planet all together to see if they can do anything like this Qur'an does. Like you see, in here, there's seven times this cough is mentioned. 114, 114, and the last time, 49, it adds up to 277. If we go to the 277th verse, we see that first of all, the Surah 3 verse number 81 is the 277th verse in the Quran in which the letter cough occurs. I'm inviting those who are sincere at heart to become witnesses. Check these things out. These things cannot be done but by the will of God, by God's forces, by, by God's messengers, human messengers, and Gabriel and Michael and the rest. Surah 3 verse number 81, the people who believe that Rashad was a messenger of God, they have problem with this. Why don't you check it out? The 277th verse in the Quran in which the letter of occurs is Surah 3 verse number 81. And it has seven of Q in it. You add the numbers, you get 277. Now, if you add 277 to the Surah and the verse number, you get 19 times 19. But you know, it is 817 is 19 times 43. And this very insignificant servant of God, I was born in 1943. And it was God's will that the numerical identity of the Quran, the 666, be revealed through me. And this is the 666 that I will, of course, this is a huge miracle on its own. And this is the one that is going to bring the corrupted foundation of the religionist down to the ground, starting with the Church of Trinity, that they're afraid of this number. So I say, be afraid of it, because the Messiah, the true Messiah, has absolutely nothing to do with what has been created by the Roman Empire. And that is what I will, God willing, talk about it in video number 23 inshallah but now in in this verse in this surah 3 verse number 81 the first letter of the first letter of is number 666 of in the quran could this be a coincidence there are seven verse seven of in this surah the number the first one and it is in what word Mithaq covenant God took a covenant from the prophets that he will give them the kitab and hikmah then comes a messenger confirming all those you see so this cough is number 666 and in these 277 verses in which the letter of occurs the word God is repeated 200 99 times if you go to surah 2 verse number 99 almighty god says we have sent down to you such clear revelations and only the wicked will reject them those who witnessed and documented what they witnessed about rashad khalifa's work that he was assassinated when he had finished 
the review, the translation of Surah 49 in his third translation, and then they turn around, they turn around, they turn on their heels, they recanted, they became blind after God had given them the sight. And also, those people also have problem with the 666. They should go back, and but they have no problem with Surah 3, verse number 81. They know that he is talking about Rashad Khalifa, God's messenger of the covenant. They need to go ahead and check these things out. Now, Almighty God says he has not left anything out of this book. Look. The number of days this man lived on this earth, it is in the Quran. The day he was assassinated is in the Quran. The work that he had to do is in the Quran. He was supposed to go, to go through the translation of the Quran three times. In the, in the third one, however, after the completion of the verse, Surah number 49, he was supposed to go out. So those people who think that uh, they killed him, they need to think again. They need to repent to Almighty God. God is a forgiving God. We are humans. We all make mistakes. Rashad Khalifa was without a doubt God's messenger of the covenant. Big deal. Look, I'm not. Messengers are mailmen. We don't worship God for bad. It's not Rashad Khalifa or Muhammad or Jesus or Moses. It's all God. God's messengers come deliver one and the same message that the Lord our God is one Lord. And we must love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind and soul and strength. Worshipping God is a full-time job. It's not just a Friday or Sunday or Monday. We have to be with God. We have to ask Almighty God for guidance. Guidance is the best gift from Almighty God. That's why in our prayer we 17 times a day we use the key al-fatiha and we say guide us on the right path you alone we worship you alone we ask for help you alone nobody else nobody else god almighty nobody else you 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 alone we worship you alone we ask for help guide us on the right path I pray, to all, I pray to Almighty God that those of us who have a little sincerity in our soul come to the realization of the fact that Almighty God is a forgiving God. Repent to Almighty God. Ask for His forgiveness. We all need to do that. But look, that's not the end of the story yet. The man who killed Rashad, his name was Glenn Cosford Francis. He was captured 19 years after assassination of God's messenger of the covenant. He was actually arrested on April 28, 2009 in Calgary, Canada. It took 19 years and 87 days for this guy to be caught. If you go to Surah 87, you see Surah 87 has 19 verses. And what's the, uh, what is the title of the Surah? The Most High, Al-A'la. The geometrical value of Al-A'la is 142. And 142 times 19 is 2,698. And that's the number of times the word God is mentioned throughout the Quran. Surah 19. Surah 87 has 19 verses. The top, the head of it is what's so incredible in here. You know, uh, if you go in the Quran and get to the 87th occurrence of the word God and you find it where? In verse num- the first verse number 142 in the Quran. In Surah 2 verse number 142. That is the, that is the Allah number 87th occurrence of the word God. 
and then you go to Surah 87, you see the, the title of it is Al-A'la. And that's the Surah that has 19 verses. Look, 87 is 3 times 29. There are 29 Surahs in the Quran that are prefixed with the Quranic initials. There are 29 surahs in the Quran that are prefixed with the Quranic initials. 29 surahs. And it was big. It was his studies on these miracles concerning these initials was the one who guided him in accordance with God's will to decode the Quran. In the Quran, there are three surahs that have 29 verses. And one thing for us to remember that a human skull is comprised of 29 pieces of bones. So in other words, if we want to really use our head, uh, we better start now. Because God has given us the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and all these things are in our head. And the head is comprised of 29 pieces of bones. There are three surahs in the Quran that have 29 verses. These surahs are what? Al-Fatha, the victory. Al-Hadid, the surah 57. And Al-Takwir, and that is surah 81. And uh, Surah 48, the title of it, the geometrical value of the title of it is 519, that's Surah Al-Fat. Al-Hadid, Surah 57, Al-Hadid is 57. 57 plus 57 is 114, the number of the surahs in the Quran. There are two surahs in the Quran that have Qaf as their initial. One is Surah 50, one is Surah 42, that uh, uh, it says Hamim Ain Sin Qaf, and then Surah, of course, 57, uh, Surah 50, it says Qaf al Quran al Majid. And in each of the two Surahs, you see that Qaf is mentioned 57 times. 57 plus 57 is 114, the number of the Surahs in the Quran. And then Surah 81, and the geometrical value of the Surah is 600. The, the, the title of the surah is 667. If you add these three numbers representing these surahs, plus the name Rashad Khalifa, you see it's a multiple of 19. Now, this 29 is very important number in the Quran. And like I said, it's, it's a part of our makeup in our head, the command center of our body, the, our eyes, our uh, ears and uh, mouth and uh, brain, all that is, and our nose, we can smell. The, the command center of human body, the whole thing contains, uh, is comprised of 29 pieces of bones. Now, since we're talking about 29, let's see what Surah 29 is talking about. You see, Surah 29 has 69 verses. Therefore, 2969 represents the Surah and the verse number. 2969 is the 428th prime number. And the person who murdered God, Messenger of the Covenant, was captured on April, on, on April 28th, 428. Anything that happens on earth or to you has already been recorded even before the creation. This is easy for God to do. Anything that happens on earth or to you. Look, this is the day that Rashad Khalifa was assassinated. This is the day that his killer, the, mur the murderous person who was inspired by those ulama, uh, was captured. Assassination, the capture. You see, it's multiple of 19. Rashad Khalifa was assassinated on the 31st day 
of the year 1990. His killer was captured on the April 28th day of 2009. The number is multiple of 19. Could all these be coincidences? That first of all, uh, the initials in the Quran takes you to Surah 9 and it spells the name of the person. These are not to focus on a person. The Shad Khalifa is gone. The Quran is here. And what we know about the Quran, we are just scratching the surface of the Quran. This Quran is mind boggling. This Quran is incredible. There are miracles in this Quran that are going to be revealed until the very last day. But the signature of Almighty God is over this Quran. God Almighty is showing us these things for us to know that everything is under God's control. God is doing everything. That truly this is a true statement when Almighty God said anything that happens on earth or to you has already been pre-recorded. These are to show us that it's been pre-recorded in this document. This Quran is 1448 years old in the lunar calendar. Who but God knew that somebody is going to come and his name is going to be this. God has created all these things. These are all under God's control. These are all because God wants to show us that this Quran is not a normal book. The fourth thing that this Quran, this miracle of the Quran does, Almighty God says, it takes doubt out of the hearts of the believers and the people of the book. The first thing, yes, it's going to disturb the disbelievers. The second one is going to, cons uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, prove to the people of the book that this Quran cannot be a human fabrication. Number three is going to increase the faith of the faithful. The people who already believe that the Quran is the word of God, they know for sure it is the word of God. Praise be to God. It cannot be the word of anything but God. Anybody. It's far beyond human fabrication. And then the fourth one is going to take all the doubts away from the hearts of the believers and the people of the book. One cannot be a believer, become certain about things, at the same time have doubts. So this, what this miracle does, take doubts out of us, out of our system, out of our soul, so that we have place for certainty. Because the two do not mix. Certainty and doubt do not mix. We have to get rid of the doubt. And these things are to help us to achieve that state. Worship your Lord in order to attain certainty. That's the last verse in Surah 15, verse number 99. And 99 is Al-Zalzala, title of Surah 99, Al-Zalzala. Well, many of the disbelievers of our time are going to face it. And 15 plus 99 is 114, the number of the surahs in the Quran. These are all to help us become certain. And of course, number five, those who have disease in their hearts, they're going to say, so what? So what is 19? Their judgment rests with God. We worship God alone. We have come to know that the Quran, the whole Quran, and nothing but the Quran came through Prophet Muhammad, who was Khatam al Nabiyin. We have come to know in the Quran, through the verses of the Quran, that hadith does not belong with religion of truth. It is falsehood. They are fabrications. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe.